All right. Well, hey, Dave, thanks for inviting me back here at uh, Festival Traders. It, uh, it's a great way to kick off the new year. And thank you, traders, for showing up. And as I go through this presentation, by all means, ask questions as we go. I definitely want to make this valuable for you and as interactive as possible. If we get time at the end, um, I'll take a look at a few of your trade ideas, apply my uh, analysis techniques to them. But today we're going to talk about the magic of math and how to be the house, how to have a trading edge. You know, and that's regardless of whatever indicators or setups you use, these uh, ideas that I'm going to talk about today are uh, universal. And I'll bet, you know, this is probably hard for everybody to pay attention. Everybody's on pins and needles right now. You know, what's what's going to happen in Georgia, right? The, the polls are probably going to close in an hour or two and the results are going to be coming in. And what's it, you know, how's it going to go? What's the market going to do? <laughs> but um, we'll find out pretty soon. So, um, again, I hope, I'll keep this as interactive as an and as interesting as possible as we rip through this, but uh, I think you're gonna like it. I think, I think it's some cool stuff. I'm a math geek, so of course I think it's cool. I'm a trading geek too. As Dave said, hey, there's risk in trading, right? I'm not a financial advisor, I'm a trader. I'm not giving financial advice. Please always use risk control. All right, what does it take to be profitable at trading? I think it comes down to these three things, and this is regardless of the instruments you trade, the setups you use, it's it's universal for all types of trading. And I, I think it's important you have great trade setups. You got to have a high probability outcome, right? You got to have an edge, right? Um, I believe in using great reward to risk ratio. And for me, that rules out um, some types of trades that are very popular. And you can disagree with me, that's cool. But uh, I, I don't like vertical spreads, credit uh, spreads. I don't like them because they don't have a good reward to risk ratio. And I'll prove that a little bit uh, later here. We'll take a live look. You got to have risk management. You got to control loss, right? Some trades are going to lose. That's just a part of the deal. So if we can keep the loser small um, and controlled, uh, we're going to have a much better shot at success. And you got to manage trades. Once you're in a trade, you know, knowing when to uh, add to the trade, when to take profit, and when to get out of that thing. Um, those are important concepts. So I'm going to walk through my ideas, how I approach this. But first, let's talk about casinos, right? So here we got some people, they're at the craps table and they got their drinks and they're rolling the dice and they're happy and they're having fun, right? And, and in my opinion, that's what a casino should be about, entertainment, having fun. If you walk in as a gambler expecting to make money or the odds are against you, you're probably going to be disappointed, right? Um, but, <clears throat> you know, these people are down on the floor smiling, having fun. Um, Stairs, there's some folks um, with green eye shades on watching the cameras counting the money and they're not gambling, right? And uh, they're in business and they're making money. And if you've ever spent much time in a casino, <laughs> um, they may have some of your money, right? And, and, the, and the way they make money is they ensure control of two things, two variables, probability and risk, okay? It really comes down to that. Every single uh, gaming table or you know thing you can do in a casino right the house has an edge they have a better probability of winning than you do all right um, but consider a simple game roulette right it seems simple you got numbers 1 through 36 half the numbers are black half the numbers are red so there's even odds in that situation 50 50 chance it's going to be red or black even or odd number and it's a one-to-one -one payout you bet 10 bucks if you win you get you know your 10 and then a $10 wins you get $20 back that's the standard deal. Um, but here we look at a roulette wheel and we go, wait a minute, what's these green things? Right, we got a zero, double zero. Um, they make all the difference for the casino. They change the odds from 50-50 of a red or black even or odd to a 47.5% win probability for the player per spin, which means a 52.5% uh, probability of win for the house. And they make all their profit at roulette on that 2.5% edge, it's not very much, right? But it is enough, right? The casinos ensure profit via two mechanisms. They ensure a probability edge by sticking those darn green spots in there and they control risk, okay? And so here, you know, the probability is controlled via the green spots and risk controlled is, is it, risk is controlled via the table limits. Um, you know, there's different limits, different casinos, different roulette tables, and of course, at all the different games, but um, I'm pretty sure you can't walk into any casino and put a million dollars on the black, right? Because there's a 47.5% chance you would win and that would be more than they're willing to give back 
on one spin of the uh, of the roulette, right? So they have table limits, right? And they figured that out, right? And there's other bets, of course, you can take. That's the simple bet, red, black, even odd. There's other crazy bets you can take, but you know, I think you guys get the idea, right? They have an edge through probability and through risk. Okay, so why not in our trading? Why not act like a casino? Why not be the house? Because we get to choose the trades we take. Nobody forces us, right, uh, to take a trade, but we get to choose the trades. We get to trade, choose the trade setups. We get to choose our risk management and our trade management, right? So why not do that in a way that gives us probability and risk control, right? So again, I said, I think you need to be a successful trader. You gotta have great trade setups, meaning probabilities on your side. You got a better than 50% probability and you gotta have um, high reward to risk ratio. You gotta have um, the, in, for me in trading, right? When I put a trade on, I want there to be some kind of objective math indicator, analytical um, basis for a target that if I hit the target from my entry, I'm gonna make more money than if I hit the stop from my entry, right? I want the the, the loss at the stop to be small relative to the win at the target. So that's a that's a good reward to risk ratio. Let me show you an example on a live chart, okay? And, uh, and I'll give you a peek at how I go about analyzing charts. I use uh, an incredibly simple version of, of Elliott Wave, and I use Ichimoku Cloud, a couple moving averages. I got a price oscillator on here, right? Let's look at gold. He's, look at the GLD um, ETF. All right, here's gold. I see a long setup here in gold. And in just a super simple Elliott wave, you know, not to elaborate, you know, that's not really what this presentation is about, but I see Elliott one, two, three, four, five. Those are wave counts. I use Fibonacci tools, right? And I go, okay, uh, this was wave three. We had a pretty good wave four retracement into this Fibonacci retracement zone. Now we're looking for a wave five extension. I'm just roughing this out for you real quick. Okay, so we got a Fibonacci extension zone for wave five, which is 61.8 to 100% Fibonacci extension. So we got a target over time here for gold, GLD ETF, to get up um, above 212, between 212 and 240. And everything I need for a long setup, here, in fact, I'm in gold, I'm long, right? Um, got in a little bit earlier. Uh, but let's let's apply this concept of reward to risk. So um, when I place a stop, I look for support and resistance areas. And so I kind of trace this out. He's a little Dow theory, right? So this current move up, right? It, it's, it's a series of higher highs, higher lows. High, higher low, high, higher low, high. I'm gonna put my stop and I'll just draw a red line, you know, right there under that last low. I'll make that line red. Maybe. There we go. There we go. So that red is just going to represent my stop. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter whether you use a hard stop with a predefined order or an alert or a mental stop, whatever works the best for you, right? That's your choice. Um, there's my entry, current price. So I'll just, I'll just make that a, a blue line. And when I take live trades, I actually go through and put these kind of lines on a chart just so I can see you know what what the parameters of the trade are what's going on when I pull it back up now I'm just going to go inside the yeah you know, inside the bottom of this uh, extension zone or make the screen line that's my target that's the money line right I'll even make that a little a little heavier it looks good green okay now I look at this trade and I think because of several things, right? There's a really clear Elliott wave count. I've got positive momentum on the oscillator. I'm above the moving averages. I'm above the Ichimoku cloud. I got higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. I got a big wave five target. So that gives me probability, right? I think that's a good setup for this trade. Now I look and go, okay, I got a good setup, right? There's a, I have an edge. I think there's a better than even chance this thing's gonna go up into this target zone eventually. Now, what's the risk? On the trade it's the distance you know the risk per share of gld is the distance from my entry to my stop right and you know how fast can i do math in my head 183 174 that looks like about a uh, nine dollar risk per share 
That's the risk. What's the reward? What's the distance from my entry to my target? And by the way, I'll, I won't exit the trade at the target. Right? I'm just establishing whether there's a good potential reward. If that thing wants to run to the top of the zone, I'll let it run. The bigger the better, right? But my reward is 213 minus 183, which is what, 17, 27? 27 versus nine, three to one. It's a three to one reward to risk ratio trade. That's good for me, right? And I can just see that. I can look at these lines that I just drew and go, this is smaller, this is bigger, this is a good thing, right? And I can apply that concept to uh, you know, whether I'm gonna trade with shares or with options, doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay. And my stop placement here brings up another point. Um, I believe in establishing stop levels based on price action or indicators. You know, there's a lot of traders who will um, say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a fixed amount into every trade. I'm gonna put five grand into every trade. And if it goes down $300, I'm gonna close the trade. Well, for me, that is kind of like saying, I'm gonna drive a mile down the road and turn left, hard left. But wouldn't you want there to be a road there, right? Um, I just think that's arbitrary. What I do, if, if 200 bucks is the max I'm willing to lose, what I do is look at the loss per share here, which we said is about nine bucks. <clears throat> and I say, hmm, if I'm only willing to lose $200 on the trade, then nine divided into 200 would give me, you know, how many shares to trade. So I'm gonna let price play out. And if it violates this Dow theory, lower low, that means that the thesis has failed, the trend has failed, it's time to bail on the trade, I lost my 200 bucks. So I set stops and then calculate my position size based on my account size, based on the, the actual parameters of the given trade. I hope that makes sense. That's important math. And I think that's, um, again, I think just setting a, you know, a fixed trade amount and then a fixed dollar loss unrelated to price action, I think that's a mistake. My, uh, my opinion, proven out over time, I believe. All right. So, uh, to be a consistently profitable thing, trader, you need great trade setups, high probability outcome, great reward to risk ratio, right? And uh, I showed you uh, the setup on GLD. I'll show you a trade I'm in. This is a real trade that uh, I'm trading. AEP, it's a short trade. Wave three down, there's your correction. Here we got a nice downtrend, low, lower high, low, lower high, right? I took an entry at this blue line here. My stop has now been trailed just above it. You can see there is some separation, but I've trailed my stop because low, lower high, that's where my stop was, low, lower high, moved my stop to a new resistance level. I got a target way down here. I think it's got a chance of working its way down there. So um, there we go. And I got a, a comment there, great explanation from, Jan, hey, thanks, Jan. And again, if you got questions or comments, I got time. All right, so here's a, a live short trade that I'm taking. That one looks awesome. And I said I was in gold. I'm in AUY. That's the vehicle I'm liking. I think the setup here was better than the GLD. So this is Yamana. Trades at huge volumes. It's a lower price deal. Um, it's a you know individual gold company. We got in here a couple days ago. Boom, here we are in profit. A little down today, but I'm not worried because my trend, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. It's all good. Momentum's good. Target's way up here. Reward to risk on this trade's four to one if you just look at it. So that's my deal. That's that's the kind of stuff I look for, and that's the math I use um, in my trading. So let's, uh, let's talk about successful traders, how they manage risk, right? It, it's important you know, that you, you understand and accept that any trade can fail. So before you put money on, you just have to accept that, hey man, this thing could fail and, and maybe it will, right? And, you know, my long-term win ratio is 60 to 65%. That means 35 to 40% of my trades are gonna fail. And I'm still a very profitable trader, but I, I am because when they do fail, which they can and do, Right? I control the risk, I control the loss, I keep it small, right? And so successful traders, they determine how much they're willing to lose 
And then they don't take a fixed trade size. I kind of covered my philosophy on that. They exit trades at the predetermined loss. So whether you actually have a live order out there or a limit order or a alert or a mental stop, you know, I, I think at a minimum you ought to have an alert. So you get a text message, you get a pop-up, right? Something says, hey, you hit your stop, right? And then you got to exit the trade every single time, right? Without exception. If you can get into this... Uh, this toilet bowl swirl if you let it go through the stop you know eh, yeah it'll come back Ugh, it's getting worse well, it'll come back and oh that's too big i can't close that trade and realize i lost anybody ever been there i have earlier in my career i'm never going to be there again right hits the stop i am out because my stop is a place that says this trend has failed so it's time to uh head for the exits all right and uh, successful traders, they're not upset if a trade fails. Maybe disappointing, but you don't get all wrapped up and, you know, I'm going to go get it back. I'm going to show that, right? And they failed, right? And they understand that trading is a system, and it's the system performance that matters. It's not what happens on a given trade. That's, you know, trading just like the casino owners don't um, get all wigged out if somebody wins a big hand at blackjack or gets on a streak or, you know, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, it's part of the deal, right? and uh, we're up here counting our money. All right, uh, reward to risk ratio, it's, you know, it's just a ratio of how much you could win versus how much you could lose, and I want that to be a positive number. Potential profit, target price minus entry, your potential loss is entry minus stop. Reward to risk ratio is the profit divided by the potential loss. Let's get that to be a big number. Two to one, three to one, 10 to one, whatever, right? Um, and I showed you on a chart already. Um, we showed, we looked at a couple there. All right. Why does why does reward to risk ratio matter? Okay. Because if your average loser is bigger than your average winner, how how good do you have to be? How good does your win ratio have to be? Well, it better be really good, like above 75%. If your average loser is bigger than your average winner you had better be winning 75% or better of your trades. That's a lot of pressure. And the market, you may have noticed, is a fickle beast, right? And there is a, you know, we have all our setups and indicators and we try to get probability and an edge on our side, right? There is a, a degree, there are degrees of variability and unknowns in the market, right? Winning 75% of your trades over the long haul, if you do it, good on you, man, congratulations. And by the way, if your reward to risk ratio and your risk management is off, you could still be a losing trader even at that win ratio, okay? That's why I like to keep my um, reward to risk ratio and subsequently my payout ratio, the size of my average winner to the size of my average loser, I wanna keep that as big as possible. That's those are the statistics that matter. Win ratio is important, but it is a far less important statistic in trading results than the payout ratio, the size of the average winner to the size of the average loser. In fact, I will show you, right? And some of you may go, are you kidding me? Here's my results um, for 2020. Uh, every single trade listed, I, I believe firmly in a, in uh, the discipline of logging and keeping a trade journal. So I uh, I did 71 trades last year. So I'm a swing trader, daily charts. I'm in the trades two to six weeks, take you know a couple of trades a week. So 71 trades. Last year was hard if you didn't notice. I had a 45% win ratio. Now my long term average is higher than that, 60, 65%. Um, but my payout ratio, the size of my average winner to the size of my average loser was 3.3 to one. So even with a 45% win ratio, I managed to uh, wrap up the year um, with a 29.86% um, return on the account. So if that was a $100,000 account, that's $29.863,000 at a 45% win ratio. Okay. Math works. All right. All right. So that's why reward to risk ratio matters, right? If your average winner is bigger than your average loser, how good does your win ratio have to be? 50 cents good. 50% is good enough. 
that just takes the pressure off as a trader, right? I gotta win half my trades, you know, try and do better. But if I can win half my trades and be profitable, I'm in a good place, right? Let me show you, um, I'm a spreadsheet geek. I looked up a spreadsheet here. Let me show you a Monte Carlo simulation I put together. I think you're gonna like it. Um, uh, if you're a math geek, if you're a spreadsheet geek. All right, so what I did in Excel here was I wanted to create a model where I could sample 50 trades. And Monte Carlo simulations where you just go through iterations by changing variables and see how the results uh, re respond to variables, right? So I, there, here's these things down here using the random number generator function in Excel. So I sample 50 trades. Every time I click save, 50 new trades are sampled. And what I do is put in a number here. What's the win ratio that I want to test? And what's the max win, max loss, right? And then for the max win, max loss, it's going to be a random loss between $100 and the max loss. And the win win's going to be a random between $100 and max win. Because, you know, every winner doesn't win max and every loser doesn't lose max. You move your stops, you take profit, you scale out. All these things are real world, right? But I can set, I can change these. Right? And this is based on a $50,000 account of 2K risk, 2% risk, which is a thousand bucks, right? So <clears throat> I can change the win percent. I can change the, uh, basically the payout ratio, but there's always variability. Even if my system produces these over a long haul, over a given 50 trades, there's going to be some variability. And that's what I've got programmed in with the random number generator in these little buckets down here and what i say is you know there's a probability of winning did it win or lose if it won what's the profit and it's a random amount between 100 and the max win and then it plots it on the graph the number that fell into each bucket all right that's the long explanation let me show you how it works so here we are if we have if we're at a 60 percent win ratio and we got a one-to-one -one payout ratio so the trades we take you know they make a thousand bucks or lose a thousand bucks max right so i take 50 trades so that 50 it made over 50 trades, which is a lot of work, um, uh, 3,600 bucks. Well, that's all right. There, it made 53, 32, 36, 6,000. Eventually, we're going to get a red number. Those are some good numbers. Boom. One to one, win ratio 60%. I win six out of 10, I lose four out of 10. And because of just normal variation, out of 50 trades, I lost money. Dang it. All right. Now, if I bump this up, you know, the higher the win ratio goes, of course, the better the results get. But let me let me do this. Let's go to a 50% win ratio. Let's go to a two to one payout. 50% win ratio. I only win half my trades, but the max I'm going to lose is a thousand, and um, my my big winners are two thousand. Well. some nice wins there's variability but what do you type in the in the question thing there what is never happening here at a 50 percent win ratio with a two to one payout ratio what is never happening it's never losing It's never losing. How good is that? Right? And, uh, oh, there was more questions. Okay. Uh, let me make sure. I've lost whether the, I'm at the top of the bottom. There we go. Okay. I'm, I'm in sync on the questions. Okay. Yeah. So um, we never lose money and we make, occasionally make some good money, right? Now let's let's just plug my uh, these are real trading results that I have. I showed you the spreadsheet here, right? You know, I publish trades to my subscribers. I get audited by a third-party account a CPA firm. That is real, right? Um, so let's say it's a 45% win ratio with a 3.3 to one. 45%. Right, and um, 
Yeah, 3.3. Okay. This is even at a 45% win ratio, this is never going to lose money. Now, my target, my goal is to be on average about two to one, right? And to be at about a 65% win. That's really, that's really a, a comfortable place to be is a two to one ongoing ratio, you know, a payout ratio and a 65% win ratio. And over time, that's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty close to hitting that. So if you look here, this, what, what it, you'll see is in this PL is it's a lot more consistent, right? There's always going to be variability. It's never going to lose over 50 trades, right? And, and uh, the distribution here of the amount one uh, tightens up. So that's a little Monte Carlo simulation. I hope you like, uh, like that. I think it's cool because I'm a math and uh, spreadsheet geek. But um, uh, in that case, Raj, yes, it's it's assuming a fixed amount. Well, it's, no, because it, it I, I I'm glad you asked. It's it's a fixed uh, loss or win within some degree of variability, right? It, that's irrespective of of the amount in the trade. Um, I do have rules for position sizing. It's you know how much am I willing to lose at the stop, and then um, you know no more than 2% of my account and I cap any position. I never put more than 15, 1.5% of my total account into any one given trade. So, you know, it's a simple formula. You go 2%, um, you know, my stop minus my entry, divide that into my 2% of my account. That gives me the total amount I could lose. Then you divide that into the uh, uh, entry minus stop. It gives you the loss per share, how many shares to trade, right? And I cap that at 15%. All right. Uh, you know, we're looking good on time here. I can go a little slower, take a deep breath, because I want to have time to look at any symbols that you're interested in and, you know, throw some analysis at it. And I'll share, I took a special trade today for the, the Georgia runoff. And if we have time, I'll, I'll share that trade with you. All right. Where are we at? All right. Controlling reward to risk ratio, right? You can't control the market, but you can control which trades you take and what you do with them. So if you have a predetermined trade stop and you know exactly how much you could lose on a trade, you make sure that's an acceptable amount. Then you have an objective reality-based price target based on you know some kind of you know science indicators. I use Elliott wave extensions and previous highs and lows and you know, combination of stuff. You know, it's it's objective. I only take trades with a strong reward to risk ratio. I, I make sure I get out at the stop price and, and I let the winners run to the target and beyond. I, I will scale out partial, right? But um, I'm gonna stay with a winner for as long as it's gonna run, all right? Uh, what about spreads? So everybody loves spreads. I, I can't tell you how many uh, webinars I've sat through and seen advertised. Um, for for credit spreads, and you know, for a long time ago, I, I I'm just I just I'm I must be dense. I don't get it, right? Because I go look at it and I go analyze it, and I I've heard the pitches, right? And it's like, well, you know, you're selling volatility, and you can win two ways, and there's only one way to lose. That's all true, right? Um, but then I go look at the reward to risk on them, and I go, that, that doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Right. Um, so credit spreads, I don't do them. I know I know a lot of people do. Maybe you do. Good on you. If you're doing well, send me a note. Let me know how you're doing that. I've talked to more people who were lured in. You know, it's like, wow, you know, wow, I'm going to sell volatility. Two ways to win, one way to lose. This is going to be, I'm going to print money. And they lost their um, money. Um, so it's an option strategy where you you got a high premium option is written and a low premium option bought the same underlying security and it um you know you you buy one and you get this credit and you sell another one as protection right you guys probably know how it works right um here's a here's a graphic from Schwab this is a I just grabbed this off Schwab right I'm gonna show you a live one here on on TradeStation right this is the typical reward or risk profile of a Credit spread. This is a credit put spread. 
credit call spread the same way, right? On this case, they're trading a lot of contracts, right? So the, the max profit is 1500 bucks, the max loss is $3,500 if it runs down through your short strike, your protected book, okay? This is typical, this is not unusual. So let's, uh, you know, take my word for it, let's see what the computer says, All right? Here's Apple. It's an option chain from TradeStation. So Apple closed at 130.78. And Trevor says, if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing credit spreads. Well, that applies to any kind of trading, right? You should go practice stuff in, in uh, Sim until you know what you're doing, right? And you should be able to, you know, if, if you take away nothing else from this presentation, every single trade, you should be able to answer the question, how much could I lose? What is the maximum amount of money I could lose on a trade? If you can't answer that question, don't take the trade. And if the answer scares you, don't take the trade. Okay. There we are here. Apple spread, right? So Apple closed at 130.78. You know, most people that trade spreads like a short duration. So let's look at the Friday expiration, right? And we'll do the puts at Apple's in an uptrend, right? Off a couple of days, but you know, massive uptrend over the last few months, right? So Apple's heading up, right? So let's do, uh, you know, kind of a, hey, Friday near term, you know, a couple, couple strikes out of the money. Here's the in the money. So a couple, 128.29, right? Let's sell those bad boys. Okay, what's what what does the math say? Well, the most you're ever gonna make on a spread, you can never make more than the credit up front, period, done, right? You get the credit difference up front, $145 on five contracts. Max loss, 355. Nearly three to one reward risk to reward. And I'm just not interested. 145 bucks with a chance of losing 350. I'm just not interested. Um, that's me. Um, and here's another thing that the computer will tell you. Um, and you know, I'm certainly not here to offend anybody. If you were to really locked into this and you like it and it's working for you, that's awesome, right? But um, if you were to ask the computer, uh, let's do a search here in uh, TradeStation's cool option station pro things. Okay, we're we're looking at Apple, right? And um, let's say we're bullish on Apple. So here's the selection. I'm bullish. Of course, I want limited risk. Unlimited risk is a foolish thing, right? And I I think it's going up five percent by the end of this month. Okay, I've just defined, oh, I put 4%, let's go 5%, okay? I'm bullish on Apple, I think it's going up 5% by the end of this month. And now, you probably can't see it, but I'll tell you what we're doing here. It says, what what kind of strategies do you want to include? And I say, everything, right? Sell, buy, puts, calls, all of it, right? Show me everything. Show me the, the highest projected profit, and then I'll run it again for the highest reward to risk ratio. So. Um, the computer doesn't listen to the news, it doesn't attend webinars, it doesn't have a bias, and every single time, because I've done this hundreds of times, if you run this scenario where you just go, I got a, I got a directional bias with a time frame, and I want to know the, the highest projected profit or the highest projected reward to risk, right? Every single time, without fail, the answer will be, you're bullish on Apple, go along the calls. No reason to make it any more complicated than that. Go along the calls. They got a whole bunch of different ranked strikes and expirations. But if you want the highest profit potential, right, or the highest reward to risk potential, go along the calls. You're bearish? It's going to be the same answer in reverse. Limited risk, bearish. We think it's going down 5% by the end of the month. Search. Go along the puts. Again, the computer does not care. It's just doing the math. How about that? All right. Uh, what's next here? So here's my fun cartoon for my perspective and on spreads 
right? It's picking up nickels in front of a steamroller. I don't want to be that guy, right? I want, you know, and, and the nice thing about going long calls, long puts, the risk is black and white. I can never get assigned, right? You have to put more capital on and cover the thing, do all this kind of stuff, right? If I go spend 200 bucks on a call contract, the most I'll ever lose is $200, period. Black and white, done, defined risk. If I'm right, I have unlimited potential upside. I could make four, six, eight, a thousand dollars on that on a big move, right? The reward risk is there, the risk is defined. I'm in control, I can't be assigned. I love being long calls and puts. Now, I'll do butterflies, I'll do some straddles and strangles and some other stuff, but um, I never pick up nickels in front of uh, steamrollers. Risk management, I think we already covered this, right? Uh, trade management, so you can get into a great trade, have a great setup, and you can still lose money, right? So you gotta take profit at the right times, you have to define exit points, you can add to the trade, you gotta stay with winners, and um, and I'll finally close it when there's an objective reason to do that. And look, I had it burn a bunch of times, so um, uh, I was having fun. Let's get to the uh, to the uh, an offer that I have, right? Um, so you know, I got an offer here. You know, these see, these three things are essential. You got to have great trade setups. You got to have a good high probability outcome, a reward to risk ratio that's positive, risk management, trade management. I offer those in a in a in a fixed service, right? What's that worth? In 2020, you know, we made 29%. You get six hours of detailed trade consultation, ongoing education, you know, if you're to pay list prices from typical providers, you know, you're gonna be spending four or five grand. I'm gonna offer you all that stuff. Um, you can be part of my stock and option pick service, which includes a live trading room. You can do it for 30 days for 37 bucks. After that, it's 97 a month. 100% money back guarantee, month to month. You know, stay with it as long as it's good for you. You can cancel at any time, no commitment. And there is the link, and I think Dave has put it up in the chat. Okay, so I got two minutes left. Oh, and there, no, wait, there's more. Um, you saw on my chart that I use Ichimoku Cloud. If you sign up for this um, as a result of this webinar here, um, I'll include my Ichimoku Cloud course that on my website, it costs 247 bucks. You do the 30 day trial, you'll get this course for free, right? So 37 bucks, 30 day trial, money back guarantee, and I'll include the Ichimoku Cloud course, how I use it. All right, that takes us to the end. Unless there's any questions real quick, fire them up. And otherwise, I sure appreciate traders, you and your time and your attention being here. Dave, I sure appreciate you inviting me back. It's always a fun audience. So um, thank you so much. Yeah, it looks like we're clocking over here. So I um, email me a question if you got it. Dean at followmetrades.com and I will follow up.